My dear students, Dr. Ashwak Kaur here and as you are well aware, I have authored books for NEET PG, NEET DM, NEET MCH as well as some of the books for USABLE examinations, MRCP examinations and my lectures would be intended to get you right on the top there for your next examinations, DM examinations, MCH examinations, MRCS, MRCP, USABLE examinations. I hope my videos will benefit a lot. I will be presenting my things in a very easy, simple and palatable form for you. Wish you good luck for your exams. Thanks a lot. My dear students, today we will be dealing with a very important topic and the topic is testes. The testes happens to be very important from a general surgery viewpoint as well as from genital urinary surgery viewpoint and we will be dealing with all the basic anatomy the surgical anatomy and all the applied aspects in which the testes gets affected. So to start with, you have to remember the testes and the scrotal sac. Could you just maximize it please? So as far as the testes are concerned, we are well aware of the scrotal sac. The scrotal sac is a cutaneous bag which lodges the testes and the spermatic cord. And this scrotal sac has got the skin, the darter's muscle, the external spermatic fascia, the cremaster muscle, and the internal spermatic fascia applied to it. And once we just pierce the internal spermatic fascia, then we come directly to the testes. And as far as the testes are concerned, you have to remember that testes are bilateral, the right side of testes and the left side of testes. And important is some dimensions of the testes. The testes happen to be 3.5 to 4 centimeters in length, almost 2.5 to 3 centimeters in breadth and the thickness can vary from 1.5 centimeters. The normal weight of the testes would be in the range of 10 to 15 grams and that's important. So these are some of the normal parameters of the testes. One important fact to remember is that the left testes drags a bit lower down than the right testes. So these are some of the facts about the testes. Now after that we have got the capsules or the coverings covering the testes. And you have to remember one important thing, just as I mentioned earlier, skin, darts muscle, external spermatic fascia, premaster muscle, internal spermatic fascia, then comes the coverings of the testes. And from outside inwards, which is the first layer which we encounter, is something which is a sort of a misnomer, tunica vaginalis. Vagina would something refer to females, but in here, the name is tunica vaginalis, which is the outer covering of the testes. And this has got two layers, the outer layer and the inner layer. The outer layer is the parietal layer and the inner layer is the visceral layer. So you can well appreciate in the figure over here. I will just go to this figure. So this is the skin of the scrotum and this is the outer layer, which is the parietal, uh, which is the parietal layer of the tunica vaginalis. And this is the visceral layer of the tunica vaginalis. Then inner to the tunica vaginalis is a layer which is given the name as tunica albuginea. So tunica albuginea because it is something like a whitish layer, a very fleshy and a very translucent layer which is given the name as tunica albuginea. And tunica albuginea, something inner to it uh, is another layer which is given the name as tunica vasculosa. So tunica vaginalis, tunica albuginea and tunica vasculosa. These are the three layers covering the testes from outside to inside. Then what's important is that we have the testes and the testes have got a pattern which is lobular. The testes is divided into many lobes. In a manner we have the thymus divided into many lobules. In a similar manner the testes is divided into multiple lobules and these range from 200 to 350 lobules in the testes and within each lobule we have got the seminiferous tubules seminiferous tubules and in each lobule we have got three to five seminiferous tubules and these seminiferous tubules are characterized by high convolutions they are very spiral they are very convoluted as you can well appreciate over here so these are the seminiferous tubules just in a radial pattern shown in the testes in this section so these are the seminiferous tubules and once we go down you can see that these seminiferous tubules 
tend to lose their convolutions, they tend to lose their spiral pattern, and they just straighten up, and now they are given the name as straight tubules. So over here, these are the straight tubules. You can well appreciate over here. So semiferous tubules, highly convoluted, and then they're losing their spiral pattern, becoming a bit straightened, and they are given the name as straight tubules now. Then what happens to the straight tubules? They just join together, and in anatomy or histology or microscopic anatomy, we give the name to anything we joins together, is given the name as reticulum, reticulum and network. And over here, these straight tubules, they just form a reticulum, and this is given the name as reticulum testes reti pertaining something to a network sort of a thing reti testes over here and the reti testes just go into the vasa efferentia so this these are the vasa efferentia the area over here void in from the reti testes begin and drain into the vasa efferentia is given the name as mediastinum testes so mediastinum testes is this area and then over here there is this area there is this area on the posterior aspect between the testes and the epididymis and this is given the name as sinus of epididymis so you can just appreciate over here this area over here this is the sinus of epididymis which lies posteriorly a cavity between the testes and the epididymis usually on the posterior aspect of the testes the tunica vaginalis is this covering as a whole on the outer surface now on a section of the testes also you can see the testicular veins the testicular artery and the ductus deferens so this is the pattern of the testes the seminiferous tubules the lobules and then the tunica albuginea in here and here this is the head of the epididymis and it continues as the body of the epididymis tail of the epididymis and the vasa deferens and this is how the spermatozoa are conducted from the testes into the genital tract now over here at the upper pole of the testes over here so this is the upper pole of the testes you see could you just please enlarge it yeah at the upper pole of the testes there's a small swelling small swelling over here and one important thing we have to go back to the embryology and you have to remember that there's a duct and this duct is given the name as paramesonephic duct the paramesonephric duct and or the malarian duct now what is important about the paramesonephric duct the paramesonephric duct once there is the distinction of the sexes the paramesonephric duct gets more developed in case of females and it leads to development of structures like uterus and the uterine tube but very one important point is to be remembered over here the paramesonephric duct does not develop well in case of males it undergoes regression because now the structures to be developed in the males are the male pattern and anything which develops female pattern has to go regression so paramesonephric duct undergoes regression in case of males so this appendix of the testes is basically a remnant of the paramesonephric duct in case of males very important a question sometimes asked in your higher ups and this is important so appendix of the testes represents the paramesonephric duct in case of males so this is one important point you have to remember about the appendix of the testes so this is quite uh, separate from the appendix worm form appendix just please minimize it <clears throat> now as far as the testes are concerned what is the arterial supply of the testes you have to remember that there are these gonadal arteries the testicular arteries in case of males and the ovarian arteries in case of females and the testicular arteries are basically these gonadal arteries are derived as lateral branches of abdominal aorta we are well aware of the abdominal aorta it has got three anterior branches the celiac trunk the superior mesenteric artery and the inferior mesenteric artery and there there are those lateral branches and gonadal arteries happen to be very important as far as the testes and ovaries are concerned so testes are supplied by testicular artery which are lateral branches of the abdominal aorta and the ovarian arteries in case of females are lateral branches of the abdominal aorta so these testicular arteries can be well see and they just arise from at the level of l2 so testicular arteries one the right side and the left side they are lateral branches of abdominal aorta Now, as far as the venous drainage of the testes is concerned, you have to be well aware 
of the venous drainage you know that the testes are present in the scrotal sac and i go back to the, i go back to the figure previously now over here these testes they normally lie within the scrotum and what you have you have the anterior iliac spine and the pubic uh, symphysis and this is the ligament which is the inguinal ligament and on the middle part of the inguinal ligament we have the inguinal canal this is the superficial inguinal ring and this is a deep inguinal ring so what happens the normally what happens the testes are just formed in the abdominal region and they descend from the deep inguinal ring to the inguinal canal into the superficial inguinal ring and then into the scrotum so the venous drainage forms a reverse pattern we have got the testicular veins we just are 10 to 12 in number and once they reach to the superficial inguinal ring they condense into four rings and once they reach this deep inguinal ring they condense into two veins I'm going back to the figure yes exactly so over here we have got almost 10 to 12 veins uh, which just uh, form the plexus around the testes and then they just come up here and in the superficial inguinal ring they just combine to form four veins and the deep inguinal ring two veins and then they continue up as the testicular vein so we have got the testicular vein the right sided testicular vein and the left testicular vein and you can well appreciate over here could you just minimize it a bit for clarity so <clears throat> you can well appreciate over here this is the left testicular vein and this is the right testicular vein one thing to be appreciated over here is that the left testicular vein drains into the left renal vein over here and the right testicular vein drains directly into the inferior vena cava this is very important sometimes asked as a question in your mcq type questions so the left testicular vein drains into the left renal vein and then the left renal vein drains into inferior vena cava while as on the right side the right testicular vein drains directly into the inferior vena cava so this is one point of distinction between the drainage of the left testicular vein and the right testicular vein which has got clinical implications as well uh, ahead which you will deal in surgery so this is important as far as the lymphatic drainage of the testes is concerned you have to remember that pre aortic and paraortic there are two groups of lymph nodes one is in front of the aorta and another is on the side of the aorta the preaortic and the paraortic group of lymph nodes they represent the lymphatic drainage of the testes similar is the case with ovaries so you remember the testes and ovaries have got almost a similar pattern of drainage over here one important point you have to remember that this is a normal uh, testicular venous pattern and this is something of, of a congested pattern and this is the varicose once the veins around the testes and the papillary plexus are diluted, this gives to a clinical condition known as varicose. Now, uh, going back to the embryogenesis, there is one important thing you have to remember about testes is that there is a normal path of descent of the testes. So what happens? The testes in the embryonic stage lie within the abdomen, and then they come through the inguinal canal from the deep inguinal ring to the superficial inguinal ring and then they descend in the scrotum and by the age of one almost uh, a newborn should normally be having the testes within the scrotum sac but sometimes the testes are not present within the scrotum and you have to advise the mothers to examine the scrotal sac of a newborn in case the child does not have testes within the scrotal sac that can be abnormal and that can be a prelude to something which we call as undescended testes or cryptorchidism so what is undescended testes the testes have not descended into the this is the normal position of the testes here in the testes have descended into the scrotal sac but sometimes due to multiple factors the testes do not descend into the normal scrotal sac and they can lie higher up within the superficial inguinal ring in the inguinal canal or above the inguinal canal abdominal so what has to be done you have to wait for some period or for a period of few months and monitor the descent of the testes in case the testes do not come down they have to be surgically brought down and we can do surgeries for getting the testes down because what is the problem with the undescended testes that the undescended testes can 
be problematic because there can be uh, certain types of tumors which can form in the testes and the, the testes can be physiologically made irrelevant because it is important for normal spermatogenesis to have the testes within the scrotal sac. So that's important. So this is one clinical condition which is given the name as undescended testes wherein testes are present higher up within the path of the descent of the testes. It's very important within the path of the descent of the testes and then we have got another condition which is called testicular ectopia or ectopic testes this clinical condition is far different from the previous one so herein the testes may be present outside the path of the descent of the testes they may be present on the thigh they may be present in the femoral region they may be present on the back buttock they may be present within the perineum or they can be prepenile or as i mentioned femoral or they can be post scrotal so herein a very important distinction between undescended testes and ectopic testes is that here the testes lie at a path at a different path, at a path away from the normal path or descent of the testes. So testes or testicular ectopia is presence of testes in abnormal positions like as I mentioned the areas just. Now uh, coming back I just told you this is you know, sometimes image based questions are asked and you can be um, uh, made uh, to have a look at the diagram and ask what this clinical condition is. So you can see, appreciate this, uh, this is normal testes and this is a normal veins pattern. In here there is a condition of the veins of the on the top of the testes okay and this clinical condition is given the, the name as varicocele which presents as a bag of worm appearance in case or a, te or a testicular or a scrotal swelling a con clinical condition which you will come to uh, come across in more detail in surgery so varicocele is one condition in which there is dilatation of the pavity for plexus of veins now uh, sometimes what can happen uh, this testes can twist upon itself a very important a very fast progressing condition which is given the name as testicular torsion what can happen the testes can twist around itself and compromise the blood supply of the testes as a result of uh, chronic um, obstruction to the blood flow to the testes the testes can die and a rapidly uh, evolving condition can evolve in which there is a lot of uh, i would say a tenderness inflammation in the scrotal sac and this clinical condition is called as testicular torsion trauma and uh, trauma and uh, kick on the testes or a, uh, or a long uh, process at, uh, attaching the testes downwards what can happen that can predispose a person to testicular torsion this is one important clinical condition which should be recognized very early very early now this is very important now there can be inflammation of the testes many conditions one of the conditions most usually referred is mumps and the inflammation of the testes is given the name is orchites now here you can see this is the normal testes and here in the red area is the area of the testes so here in this is the inflammation of the testes a condition called as orchites now yesterday you, i just showed you a slide and this can also be an image based the, this is the epididymis in case the epididymis is red that's epididymitis and here in the testes is red and this is orchites so inflammation of the testes is given the name as orchites and sometimes you can be asked to identify orchites as in the image based question over here now testes is one important uh, uh, organ which can have presence of testicular cancers abnormal growth they can be of multiple types seminoma uh, non seminomatic -semino germ cell tumors choreal carcinoma teratoma we will be dealing with those in pathology this is not a point of concern over here but you have to remember that testicular cancer is very important i hope that you will revise all these points about the testes especially the surgical anatomy of the testes and this will help you in your examinations thanks a lot